Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop and this Workshop Notes video number 24. There's a lot to cover today. Uh, I've been making a new bench, uh, which I'll tell you about in a series of videos which I'll be producing in the next sort of three weeks or so. Um, it features a really super duper vice from Axminster. It's got push to open drawers with Accuride runners and uh, the whole thing uh, has been built so it will fit through a door. Uh, let me give you a bit of background. Now you may think I'm mad because I, I did have a big solid bench with two vices, a normal vice and an end vice, and it was absolutely fabulous. But because we were expecting to move into a house where the workshop was going to only have a narrow door into it, the bench was too big to even get in. And so I sold it. And now I realise I cannot manage where it, a solid bench which has got a proper woodworker's vice in it. So that's what I'm building. But this time I'm making sure it's going to be small enough so it can go through a normal door. And I will be making a series of videos, probably three, possibly four, about the build of that bench. Now, do you remember that garden umbrella? Well, I've had to do a few things just to make it a little bit more stable. Here's a bit of what I've been up to. What's this crazy guy doing this time? This is the base of my garden umbrella. And I found during some of the windier uh, times of last summer uh, that it was moving very slightly. Now, the manufacturer does recommend that you fill this base uh, with sand or gravel. We did that and discovered that actually at the end of the season when we wanted to put everything away, it was a little tricky. So what I've decided to do, uh, rather than fill these compartments you see here with sand or gravel, I've made these little concrete blocks which fit absolutely spot on into each of these places. So here's my bit of cardboard which I've cut roughly uh, to shape to act as a liner. Now the purpose of the cardboard is very simple. When this concrete goes off, I don't want it to be so tight that it's difficult to get it in and out. So the cardboard just makes the actual finished concrete shape just a tiny bit smaller. Now so it doesn't get really messy, I've got these plastic bags and these are very cheap ones, very very thin, and I just open it out like so, push it down into the space where I'm going to put the concrete mixture. Mixed it up here, that's the right consistency. And I've got an old funnel which I've cut off, which I'm going to use to help me get this in without making too much of a mess. And then what I'm going to do is to sort of stomp it down with this piece of stick. I've filled it to about um, that far from the top and I'm now going to take one of my bits of rope, and this is a nylon type of rope, it's not going to rot, tied knots on each end, put a washer on uh, there, and I'm going to push this down into my wet mixture, and so there it is, I'll just introduce it to the wet mixture, and I'll push that over to one side, put my funnel back in place, and add some more of the concrete. Now I have made this mixture slightly on the strong side, that will help it withstand, you know, if it gets left out in the frost or whatever. That's fine. So I'm keeping this just below the, the lip of the black plastic, uh, and that will ensure that uh, when I put that lid on, that the rope won't get in the way. Somewhere for the rope to go. That's another one done. So here we have the finished result. I haven't quite finished all of the spaces here because I ran out of cement, but I actually think I've got enough of these now uh, to work. Now, just in case I've given them a coding, uh, these on this side, I've got a single dot, here's two dots, each of these got three dots, and there's none at all. So I think even if there's some variation in size between these various bits, uh, I'll be able to get them to fit in properly. So all I've got to do now is to pack this away and wait for a nice sunny day. Thank you. 
Now you've not seen this before, this is a small budget turntable trolley and I bought this from Coldine Casters. And the reason I bought it initially was that uh, we were due to move house at any minute, so we thought, and I needed to be able to move my planing machine and a number of other things. And this has a carrying capacity of up to 250 kilos, and that's more than enough for my planing machine to sit on top as I move it either out of the workshop uh, or into the new workshop and so on. It also has a decent sized platform. It's 100 centimetres by 60 centimetres. Now, it's, this is really well constructed. It's got pneumatic tyres, uh, which you really need, as you saw just now, I was wheeling this over gravel. Uh, you do need decent tyres, not little solid ones. And the whole thing about it is it's engineered uh, to last. If I turn it upside down, and, and you can probably just see here, there's a proper turntable arrangement. There's a huge uh, bolt uh, going through uh, what is the front uh, wheel axle uh, and the frame of this. Now this bed is 350 millimeters uh, from the ground. Uh, the wheels are uh, 260 millimeters in diameter. Uh, and everything about it is well constructed. Uh, you can oil these bearings, the, the bearing between the front axle and the t uh, on the turntable uh, can be greased and so on. And so this is going to uh, really last. Now it's made in the UK and it is not cheap, uh, but uh, I think you pay for what you get. And I'm sure you saw the relative ease of me uh, transporting this little lot uh, round from the barn. Um, I'm guessing and say that altogether this weighs probably about 180 kilos. And when it's not in use, there are a couple of uh, clips here. You pull these out, take the handle off. The turntable will swing all the way around underneath itself so that it takes up less room. And you'll be seeing a lot more of this, particularly as I do my move into the new workshop. Now, the uh, face of this vise here uh, had a, a defect in the, in the back of it, and I was a bit unhappy about it. So I decided to use my white side inlay kit uh, to fix it. Now, you can't see any of it here, uh, but this is what I did. Now, my piece of wood, which is going to be at the uh, back of the vise, it's the uh, vise face which is attached to the main body of the bench, uh, has a defect in it. Now, the defect actually won't be seen at all. It would be uh, behind everything. It would never be seen. And I thought it would be a good idea, um, really, as a, an intellectual exercise or a bit of practice for my woodwork, uh, to put a patch in there. So I've made a template, uh, which is this green piece of 10mm um, MDF, uh, and I'm going to use the white side inlay kit. Now, I've made a video about this already, and if you search through my videos, you'll find it. So I'm not going to explain how it's used, but I'm just going to tell you that's what I am using. And I'm using my OF1010 router. Now I'm at the stage now with the router where I'm just centering uh, the uh, little guide bush holder, and that's this, this thing here. And with the kit, you do get a little centering um, tool, it's, it's, it fits into the router and it's tightened up and then it goes through uh, the guide uh, which is in the guide bush holder and I'm now going to screw this into place and that then guarantees that everything is centred. So that's that guide bush holder, the guide bush centred. So I'm all set up so I'm now going to cut out the, uh, the female part of the shape I've set my depth and I'll plunge once I'm ready. Right, I'm now going to cut out the male piece that's going to fit in there. Uh, one's got to be careful, of course, this time not, not to allow the writer to go wandering off into the, uh, the middle of everything. So I'm going to take my time. And 
that's, that's the piece of wood now in uh, with, the, with the glue and um, it's just very slightly proud of the surface. Uh, I'll clean that up later. I thought when I picked this out of the uh, rubbish wood box that it was a piece of maple. It's not, it's actually a piece of beech, but it, it will do the job. It's not going to be seen. Now sometimes I get the odd visitor from time to time uh, to the Newbrick workshop and uh, recently I met a very nice chap who came here. I apologise for the sound on this little video clip. And this is my friend Jim who's travelled down here today from, where is it Jim? It's in Flittick. Flittick. Flittick in Bedford. And he's come to visit the Newbrick workshop and as a token of my appreciation of him driving all this way, uh, we've given him Oh, a stool top to take away with them so you can build himself a workshop stool. I can build a stool, I can build it to the right height, and it's going to have the New Brick Workshop logo put it on. Look at that. Okay. Isn't that nice? That's <laughs> fantastic. Thanks, Jim. Thank you very much, Peter. Cheers. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> well, that's about the end of this workshop notes video. Now, Please may I remind you that if you wish to have plans from me, uh, YouTube no longer have a private messaging service, just make a comment on the actual video which is associated with the plans you're asking for and give your email address. If you do that, it should get picked up by the spam uh, mechanism, which means only I should be able to read it. I will then react to it and I'll delete that comment of yours uh, so that uh, nobody else can see your email. Now please bear with me as far as uh, frequency of videos goes. We are trying to move house and uh, it's a long slow process and it's taking a lot of hard work going to look at new properties and also trying to sell this one. So, so please bear in mind that the frequency of my video production is not quite what it was before. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.